you look at the, the picture of the heavyweight, you know, it's, uh, for me, it's, it's, it's anybody's uh, bottom, really. So this fight, you know, it's a must win for me to able Ludover, the main event, to maneuver me up there. The 92 Olympic bronze medalist from New Zealand, David Tua, has slugged his way into the sights of a world title with 28 wins, 24 by knockout. And even after suffering his first defeat last June, it was such a close, rousing slugfest, Tua maintained the lofty fourth-ranked heavyweight position in the WBC. And in the loss, he gained a valuable lesson. I think I was probably taking, taking my time too much. I think I should have started a lot faster, a lot earlier, you know, from the first round. Not good news for tonight's opponent, Jeff Wooden, who knows exactly what he's staring at down the other end of the barrel. It kind of reminds you of the Tyson, the Mike Tyson look, you know. He do a little bit of that little picky boo and the little Joe Frazier thing, and uh, he's going to be right there in front of you. Uh, he's not backing up. Uh, I believe he only have one speed, you know, that's coming forward, so he won't be hard to find. Wooden, a crafty, dangerous southpaw with plenty of moxie and heart, last year had courageously banged with the bigger Hasim Rockman and Michael Grant, and has decided he's had enough of those impressive-looking defeats. I do have boxing ability. If you look at a lot of heavyweights in the boxing division, most of them just stand still and they slow. You know, it's just whoever catch who first. And I kind of like been caught up in that mentality myself. You know, trying to be all big and bad. And most of the boxers I fight, you know, they are bigger and probably some of them are a lot stronger than I am. But uh, you really haven't seen too many boxers heavyweight that is that's boxing. I'm gonna try to figure out playing a little bit of Muhammad Ali style in to fight tonight. You know, I even got my black and white uniform on like Ali has. So bring on Ali versus Frazier, the simulation. In the world of David Tua and Jeff Wooden, the stakes are just as high. It's a very crucial situation. It's a very nice one. Well, in his only loss, David Tua learned a valuable lesson. Don't give your opponents a chance to breathe. Let's check out these two fighters on the tail of the tape. David Tua, one thing that we have found out that David Tua in this fight against Wooden weighs more than he has ever weighed for any fight in his young career. He's up to 234 pounds, while Wooden, who in his last fight in October weighed 221, says he's doing some things differently. He's actually training better right now. And there is a, the example, 209 pounds, but is it enough against the big punching David Tua? We are in Maryland, and these are the rules. Standing eight count not in effect. Three knockdown rule is in effect, and you can be saved by the bell only in the final round. This is a scheduled ten round fight. We're ready for the intros. Let's go into the ring, and there's the man, Ed Darian. Darian. From the Pikesville Armory here in Pikesville, Maryland. Main events and Baltimore Pro Bouts in association with Budweiser, the King of Beers, proudly present this next bout, a scheduled 10 round heavyweight bout. It was approved by the Maryland State Athletic Commission. Its chairman, the Honorable Carl M. Milligan, Jr. Patrick Pinella, executive director, and Eugene Conti, Jr., secretary. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 10-round heavyweight bout, referee Gary Komponeshi. Introducing first in the red corner, wearing the white trunks with the black trim. He weighed in at an even 209 pounds. This young man has 17 wins, five losses with 11 knockouts. From Mariana, Florida, ladies and gentlemen, here is Jazzy Jeff Wooden. Wooden. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with the white trim. He tipped in at an even 234 pounds. This veteran pugilist has 28 wins, only one loss, with 24 knockouts. All the way from South Auckland, New Zealand, ladies and gentlemen, ranked number four by the WBC, here is David, the Terminator, Tua. Tua. Gentlemen,
gentlemen, you have both received your instructions in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Watch your low blows, and most of all, obey my commands. Touch them up, come out for the bell. Thank you. Tua with Duva in the corner. Number four heavyweight, according to the WBC. He sees number 10, Shannon Briggs, getting a world title fight. And David Tua, who has that one defeat to Ike... I'd be a Bucci, but in a terrific fight, very controversial decision. As you heard, says he took his time. Not going to do that anymore, but that's done. Learns from that, moves on, on and upward. No question, one of the World Heavyweight Championship contenders, just 25 years old, David Tua. But uh, Jeff Wooden feels that Tua's one-dimensional, can't box and jab the way Wooden can, can't move the way Wooden can, especially Tua now tipping the scales at 234. And Jeff Wooden, who is, always gets himself entangled in brawls, is incredibly courageous, incredibly game, but as you can see here, generally gets in with heavyweights who are bigger and stronger than he is, and by the end of the fight, he's on the short end of the stick, but certainly slugging it out to the very end so he says he's thinking more now he's gonna fight his fight relax control the pace use what works for me he says I know two is gonna use what works for him it's those kind of clubbing shots so what in the southpaw who could be very tricky very dangerous he has a very vexing style he says in the ring I'm versatile I can box or punch whatever my opponent does not want to do and you know David Tua wants to just brawl. He says in the ring, I'm aggressive. I am just a banger. His best punch is the right cross. Tua likes to be exciting in the ring. 24 knockouts, 28 wins. Pretty exciting. 11 of those in the first round, including first round knockouts over world-ranked John Ruiz, also over Daryl Wilson. And speaking of Daryl, Coley coming up with Willie Wise in our main event. 12 round NABF welterweight title. And this is a co-feature, a main event on any other night. But the uh, local product out of Washington, D.C., Daryl Coley in the spotlight here tonight in Pikesville, right in the Baltimore area. Good combination. You gotta watch the top of the head of Wooden, especially if you're a body puncher like Tua is becoming. And Tua realizes the importance, especially in a 10-round or even a 12-round fight, the importance of the body, good body attack. After it'll the, make those movers like Jazzy Jeff Wooden is trying to be. It'll make them sit down and punch with you. Two is suffering that defeat to uh, Ike Ibiabuchi. And after that fight, he took five months off for uh, elbow surgery, left elbow. He's had a problem with calcium deposits for a while, so he took care of that. And then he returned to the ring in November and put Jeff Lally down four times before stopping him in the second. The crowd now getting a little antsy, calling for some more action after the women's fight that generally lights things up and did in a hurry here tonight, as usual. And uh, want a little more from these two heavyweights as we move into the final five seconds of round number one. David Tua off the bronze medal in the 92 Olympics when he represented New Zealand, turned pro in December of 92 at the tender age of 20. And he won his first nine fights and first 12 of 13 by KO. Making his climb up to number four in the world. WBC, he was number three before the Ibiabuchi fight. It was such a good fight. Really didn't drop him very far, just one spot. It was but such a, yeah, that was such a physical fight. Both fighters scored. There was a nice right hand of the body. Punching by two. Hit your opponent right in the middle of the body. Oh, that's smart. Oh, that body shots hurt. Head shots I can shake off. Easy for you to say. Yeah. David Tua got into boxing when uh, he was nine years old. His uncle, uh, Futoto, took him to the gym. Hope I said that correctly. He said he didn't like it. He didn't want to have anything to do with boxing. Then we, when he was 12 years old, their family moved to New Zealand. 
And he tried it again and he liked it then. He went 88 and 6 as an amateur before turning professional. And David Tua did that back against Ron Humes on December the 1st of 1992. He knocked Humes out in the first. Well, you heard what David Tua said about the lesson he learned in his defeat that when he watched that tape again, he just took too much time, should have started faster and earlier from the first round. But he has not done that tonight. Taking his time, his corner telling them, telling him in between rounds that you know, you gotta get inside, you can't win this fight from the outside. That's exactly what Jeff Wooden wants. Although Wooden, you see how far he is staying away, stretching, unable to even get the jab in. Yeah, and you see him moving around to his right. That is away from the power of a right-handed puncher. However, David Tua has a terrific left hook. And there it is. Land the mark. Actually, for Tua, outside is inside. Short arm, 71 inches. Especially for a heavyweight. Wooden has a five-inch reach advantage, and he is staying on the outside to try to use it. Wooden generally takes rounds to get warmed up. Good defense from Wooden. Tua not quite able to hit the mark. And for Tua, Wooden also a yardstick. Here's a guy, Tua's talking about, he wants to go up against guys like, like, uh, like Hasim Rockman. And uh, Wooden going nine tough rounds before finally stopped by Rockman. Also went the 10 round distance to undefeated Michael Grant. Both Grant and Rockman with 22 and 0 going into those fights. Final seconds of the second round. And Wooden doing what he wants to do, stay on the outside. David Tua, Jeff Wooden. Sweat flowing through six minutes of action in a scheduled 30-minute fight, 10 rounds. And David Tua starting slowly. Again, hearing it from his corner, Lou Duva and Ronnie Shields, very vocal. In asking a surprise. Tua to step up the pace. Just don't wait on him. Go for it. Yeah, he tried to do that in the second round, but he was missing too many punches, Tua was. Had he been landing those shots in the second round, he would have continued that here. Now he's still a bit befuddled by the southpaw stance. When you fight those left-handers, they face you backwards and they come at you backwards. And a jabbing southpaw is so difficult to beat because you see that southpaw stance. You can't get your jab working. Good combination from Tua. They are begging Tua between rounds. Back him up. They're saying both hands. Be sure to follow up. When you hurt Tua, come back with another punch. There's a good uppercut from David. Does Williams a fighter who gets into the flow the longer he goes. He, he gets dangerous later in fights. Good with great heart. He's only been stopped two separate occasions. Whoa, good combination. Tua has got the power. One punch KO artist. 18 of his knockouts of his 24 have come within the first three rounds. And as you can see on the face of Tua now in the stalking mode. Moving in. And then for the first time in the fight, tied up by Wooden. Yeah, Wooden got the breath knocked out of him. Gasping for air. He hurt, got hurt downstairs to the body. Good uppercut from Tua. Tua has got incredible hooks and uppercuts. And he knows he can rely on that big hammer. He has had several fights in which he was even after 10, 11 rounds and then knocked opponents out in the next round. Oh, well, Tua with the left, but Wooden returns a left of his own that kind of stopped David Tua in his tracks. And that's what they're asking for from Jeff Wooden. They also want him to follow up. When you crack your opponent with a shot like that, they want him to come back with a right hook. Body punches. Oh, body punches. Smart. Wooden protecting his body better now. <laughs> realizing he's leaving his head open doing that, but it hurts to get hit in the body. Gets upstairs to block that right hand. Five seconds and counting in round number three. 
Lashing the jab. And... Working up the sweat already. Daryl Coley in the rhythm, getting ready for the main event. Yeah, but that's not the way he fights. He doesn't dance in the ring. He fights. Speaking of fights, here comes Jeff Wooden. He may be Wooden, but he is not a stiff, as many of the good heavyweights have found out. Wooden had a record of 17 and 2. He was kind of on the cusp, ready to move up. But then losing to 22 and all Michael Grant, 22 and all Hasim Rockman, going the distance with Grant, going to the ninth round in a slugfest with The Rock. Very game, but unable to make that step. And uh, now trying to do so, changing his style a little bit, become more of a boxer, thinker in the ring, do what's best for him. Going up against the fourth ranked heavyweight, according to the WBC, David Tua. And Wooden really gets in there, takes his shots out of Fort Bragg, North Carolina. He has about 100 friends who've made the trip here to watch him fight. Two-time Armed Forces champion out of Fort Bragg. Did not start boxing until he was 24. He, he turned pro less than four years ago. Made great strides. He used to watch Muhammad Ali and loved his style, and he started boxing in the Army. He went 75-8 and eight as an amateur. Jazzy Jeff Wooden before turning pro back in May of 1994 against Nathaniel Spears. He knocked him out, speared him in the first round. Right plan tonight for Wooden was to box, don't slug. He came out at the first of this round to try to establish control of the round with some aggression, but then back on his bicycle, on his walking stick. There's a good combination. Notice how Tua starts off at the bottom. An explosion by David Tua here on the fourth. He continues to bang away. Wooden a heavy bag in front of Tua, but it's Wooden who fights back. And this is vintage Jeff Wooden, who couldn't leave himself open now, now that he's decided to slug back. Oh, crunching blows by Tua. Nothing but air on those two shots, but Wooden certainly heard them go by. They've said in boxing that Jeff has a wooden chin. <laughs> he can take the shots. I think it's petrified wood. If he's hoping to tie a Tua out, and you see Tua breathing a little bit, now the open mouth, the Tua has gone 11, 12 rounds in three of his last four fights, coming on in the late stages against Ibuchi. But you have to wonder if two is too tired to go. Weighing in at 234, heaviest ever in his career. So the crowd applauding again the courage of Wooden. But you can see the marks of two already on the side of his face. Let's listen in. Once again, the jab. They think they have two attiring. Second Take him out to a couple of the later rounds. I don't know. Tua has shown good resiliency. Even in the later rounds, able to score knockouts. Jeff Wooden came out in that fourth round and tried to establish control, but he stayed in there and slugged. He had so much success early in the round that he continued doing that late in the round. And that may have cost him the round. Almost cost him the fight. What they want Wooden to do, jab and then step around against those left handed fighters. If you jab and then step around and get around their blind side, they can't see you and then score just like Jeff did right there. But Tua tonight running into the speed of Jeff Wooden, demonstrating it right there. Wooden 
is a, a confounding type of a fighter. Wooden in the white, Tua in the black fronts. Tua felt that he would be able to punch his way through Jeff Wooden. Now look where the hands continue to go for Wooden. As the fight goes longer, his hands, gloves get heavier. Hands go down. Gerald Coley, Willie Wise. It's coming up in our main event. Welterweight NABF Championship. Willie Wise going up against a guy who's been a magician in the ring. And Daryl Coley, he's pulled out some victories after coming off the canvas in miraculous style. And one of the real exciting fighters to watch. Great to watch. Never count him out. He'll get hit, he'll get knocked down, but he'll come back to try to win. Lost just one fight in his career. In 34. Tua, he can't punch Wooden out, quick, try to quick, throw quick, him quick. out of the ring. Calm down. Calm and you know down, what? Right? I believe he could do that. 10, 234 pounds, the Terminator, David Tua. A more solid David Tua than we've seen in the past. We've seen him in the past where he was out of shape, overweight. Here he, he comes on strong toward the end of the round, too, the final minute. He's trying to pick it up. The heaviest he's ever weighed, but he may like this weight. Last fight, the Ibea Bucci was at 226, eight pounds lighter. And again, snapping upstairs is Jeff Wooden. Nicknamed Jazzy Jeff out of the improv. A lot of jamming in there in the ring for this heavyweight. Ten seconds and counting in round number five. Interesting heavyweight matchup in our first co-feature tonight. Gaining more and more confidence in that corner. Jazzy Jeff Wooden striking with some combinations. Let's go. Let's get trying to keep David Tua Let's off go. of him through five rounds and five rounds Let's to go. go. Coming out with the left hook is Tua. Who won his first 27 fights, 23 by knockout. Advancing quickly in the heavyweight ranks and now in position to make a run at a world championship at number four in the WBC. He sees number 10, Shannon Briggs, getting a world title fight against Lennox Lewis. Oh, big shots downstairs. But Tua in a position now because he wants to fight some of the other contenders and solidify a, a shot at the crown. You know, he does look more focused tonight. Since I've seen him in a long time, he looks fit. Looks like he wants to fight. Look at these combinations from Tua. In the past, he was able to go out. He had so much power, he'd just go out and knock out his opponent. It really wasn't a fight, but tonight he's using his timing a bit. He's setting his punches up. He's starting off at the body and then working his way up to the head. Not just run, rushing in with reckless abandonment. His jab from, from Wood is so vexing. They're so pesky. Jabbing Jeff Wood, and then he follows it up with the left hand. And this is where Wooden could just get annoying and take you out of your game. And that's what he's trying to do with Tua. Frustrate you. Get that glove out of my face. <laughs> Let me hit you. <laughs> now there's pain involved in boxing, but uh, here Jeff Wooden is just becoming a pain. <laughs> Chris Berg jabbing in your face. Strategical. Well, perhaps he learned that from Chris Berg. Jeff Wooden fought Chris Berg losing a 10 round decision back in January of 1996. And gave uh, uh, Chris one of his uh, better runs. Yeah, he said his style is just agitating. But he never hurt me. But he's just obnoxious talking about Chris Berg. And he has an obnoxious style, also a southpaw.
to the body. You miss the head, go downstairs to the body. This is a kid in tour that they have really been doing a lot of work with. Lou Duba gets into the gym and screams instructions on him. They've got a picture of the heavyweight sumo wrestler, Akio, in the gym to remind David to not to get too much overweight. In fact, Lou Duba said he even calls him sometimes. He calls to a uh, Akio. Oh, a couple of hundred pounds short. Yeah, right. He doesn't want to get want him to get that big though. Baltimore's favorite son, Johnny Unitas, former Colt quarterback, NFL Hall of Famer, and when you talk about heavyweights in the sports world. Johnny Unitas here in Pikesville, Maryland, right outside of Baltimore. Enjoying this with a big crowd here at the Pikesville Armory, watching this heavyweight encounter. Moving into round number seven. And Jeff Wooden is taking all that David Tua can deliver. Punching shots. Tua punches through an opponent. But Wooden shaking it off and coming back in his pesky fashion. So what are they thinking about in the corner of Tua? Lou Duva is there and so is the champ. Lou Duva, Jeff Wooden has an obnoxious style. Yeah. What are you trying to get David to do? I'm trying to get him to cut the ring off on the one and walk in, get closer, and, and so he can throw short combinations at this guy here. He'll knock this guy out if he gets close to him. He's not doing it. He's not yeah. going back to him. Well, I think Jeff Wooden knows that. Did you expect this type of a fighter in no, Jeff Wooden? No, I didn't think that he would um, move, jab, and, and run like this here. You know, I thought that he would stand there and fight. A couple of fights I send me, he stands there and fights you. Yeah, he is really focused tonight on his right. movement. What do you going to try to do? I saw some body shots earlier. You think more of those? Yeah, I'm trying to go to the body and then come right up on top. But I want three and four punch combinations. That's what I'm trying to get him to do. But I want him to get close so he can punch. He can't lay out there because this guy's leaning over and just touching him, touching him, and making him look bad. And he's hard to hit from the outside. Now, Lou, this is the seventh round. How close is this fight? Well, I think David is winning with his punching power. But, uh, hey, you never know. You know, it's a fight out there, but I'm going to I'm gonna start... I'm just going to start giving a little attacking strategy out there. I'm done. You better go out there and fight or else. Yeah, and I know. I've heard that strategy yeah. myself. I know Lou Duba. He wants a knockout tonight. I How can you get a knockout? He's got to get there and punch. If he gets in there and punch, he knocks the guy out. Yeah, I see you guys have done a lot of work. Right there. Same. A lot of work in the gym up and down. Here he comes. Here he comes, Lou. What do you want him to do now? I want him to stay, keep right on top and punch. That's all he has to do is stay right on top. Hit something. Is he getting off of him too much? He goes in, scores, and then he walks back. Is he what? He walks in, he scores, he backs him to the ropes, then he steps back. That's right. We don't want him to step back. What we want to do is punch and then move on the side and punch again. All right, Lou Duba, you got your work cut out for him. Keep him on the inside. He wants him taking him out, Al. Okay, so let me try. 30 seconds to go in this seventh round and uh, offensive seventh round for David Tua. Jeff Wooden, a fighter who has taken some heavy shots here in the last year of his career from the likes of the Tuas and the Hasim Rockmans. Closing seconds of the seventh. We're in the Pikesville Armory right outside of Baltimore for a night of Tuesday night fight action. Al Albert along with the champ. Sean O'Grady, Kathy Long, a winner in the women's semifinals. She moves into the March 31st finals against Sweden's Alina Aukinson. Looking forward to that. Kathy in her, in her pro boxing debut, the former five-time kickboxing champion, trainer to the stars, movie queen. And she'll be back here on USA March 31st. And right here, David Tua just trying to figure out the puzzle of Jeff Wooden, although two appears to be comfortably in front here in the eighth round, has certainly taken the attack to Wooden, but uh, Wooden does not comply with uh, David Tua. Now Wooden wants to stay in there for the distance, but see what they're trying to do now. They want David to step over. What Lou was talking about is cutting the ring off to his left side. Step over and make Jeff Wooden run into your right hand. So you do that by stepping over. You control your opponent with your feet. Control his movement. 
Step over to David Tour. Step over to your left. Cut the ring off to that side and force Jeff Wooden into your right hand. David Tua says his best punch is his right. He also has a good left hook. But he is having trouble with this style of jazzy Jeff Wooden. Advancing, punching through Tua. Clubbing shots. Oh, the left uppercut. All of that set up by body shots. Oh, good combination outside and inside from Tua. The uppercut, what a what a debilitating weapon. Oh, to get hit with an uppercut, you get hit on the point of the chin, can knock you out. You get hit under the nose, it'll break your nose. You get hit in the, in the Adam's apple, you'll, you'll be coughing a few rounds. You get hit right in the middle of the chest in your xiphoid process, in your solar plexus, oh, knocks the wind out of you. One it's a great punch. Jeff Wooden started late, right, right. but uh, may have a very short career. He's giving it his best shot, but in the fights we have seen him, he's just taking too many punches. Oh, and like look that. at these shots. And now Tua senses it. He has Wooden against the ropes. And oh. Wooden walks out of it. Tua staying as close as Lou Duva wants him to. But Wooden also staying close. Wooden's frozen because of those body shots. You, put, you hit your opponent in the right place in the body, and they freeze. Their legs won't move. Oh, you hit him in the right place in the chin and everything moves. <laughs> the fight's over. A Tua attack in the eighth round. Watch how Jazzy Jeff just walks out, walks away, pulls back, tries to take some of the power out of the punch of Tua. Terminator, David Tua. Lou Duva would like for him to knock out Jeff Wooden. I think so would David. Now David, David, in order to score a knockout, he's going to have to turn it up and keep it up. You get Jeff Wooden hurt, you get him back to the corner, that's when he is very dangerous. He hangs in there, he survives. He's Pesky shots from the outside. And also, you got to cut off that ring to the left side. Lou Duva knows what it is that David needs to do. Slide over to your left. Keep cu cutting the ring off. Cut it off. Stop that right there. Every time that Jeff Wooden moves around behind David Tua, Tua's got to reset. you got to reset his feet. In Wooden's fight against The Rock, Hasim Rockman, the hard punching, undefeated heavyweight. Wooden hung in there, actually got some great shots in early in the mid-rounds, but it was around here in the eighth round that Rockman's superior punching power started to take its toll. Wooden had a standing eight count in the eighth and ninth rounds and then knocked down in the tenth, and the fight was stopped in the tenth round. So here is uh, Tua now moving into this eighth round, and certainly his shots, you would think, have taken its toll on Wooden. And see if he could close in here in the last three rounds. Yeah, but these punches from Wooden, oh, there's a right in the end nice of that one. Right hand. But Wooden walks away from it. Oh, and takes some the of the power. Yeah, he took some of the power out of that punch by moving to his right. Here you go, let's go. But you know what? The punches of Jeff Wooden have subsided since about the fourth round, the fourth and fifth round. Jeff Wooden's punches had not had the, the, the effectiveness that they had before that. Oh. Wooden is woozy after that one. Jazzy could be turning into dizzy. David Tua understands that there are many opponents out there we could face tonight with this kind of punishment would actually not still be out there. That's what you got to catch a fighter like Wooden with. When he reaches to throw that jab, that's when you got to connect with a left hook. All Tua here in the eighth. He has found a weapon that works. The left hook over that jab. Those southpaw fighters are susceptible to that punch because of the way they move. Wooden waiting for the bell.
and Wooden is uh, helped down to the stool and now listening to his corner. Very difficult to listen to your corner at this particular moment. Why is that? And really even more difficult to uh, notice that she has the wrong round card. <laughs> she has a round card? <laughs> Meanwhile, you see the NABF title belt or belts owned by Jazzy Daryl Coley in his backyard. Uh, he, he is ready, as you can see, the tension mounting in the locker room there. Two title belts, and really he doesn't need either one of them because he's so skinny, and neither one of them fits him. When he gets in the ring, though, know, you know why he's a champion. Good again, the left hook. The left hook over the jab. Wooden lazy with that jab now, dragging him back. Two of those is just three minutes to go. And if on the exhaustion meter, certainly Jeff Wooden reaching that moment at this point before Tua. Well, David Tua, Tua, Tua going for the home run. He wants to stop it here in the 10th. He knocked out Oleg Maskaev in the 11th round. His latest knockout. That fight back in April of 1997. So he has good power even late in the fight. And he's been throwing the punches throughout tonight. He has uh, kept the pressure on. David Tua has. And Wooden with the backstop, stop just in the survival mode right now. And Jeff Wooden understands that he tried to box and take two out of his game, but right now, unfortunately for him, the handwriting is there. He's got to slug it out and look for the miracle punch. And not to an out to win this fight. So it does not really look like he's ready to go. Well, this is a game where you learn quickly. You see how Jeff Witten now keeping that right hand up around his ear? Tired of eating those left hooks. Boy, they are asking for movement from the corner of Jeff Witten. Tua springing in very tight in front of Wooden. David Tua, rank number four in the WBC in the heavyweight division. Inching closer and closer. The world title shot. That left hook catches Jeff Wooden. You got to follow it up, though. You catch Wooden with one shot, he's on his bicycle. You got to catch him with twos and threes. Something that David Tua is now learning. Wooden making it interesting early, but uh, just not able to withstand the constant clubbing oh, and, he and punishment like, from not, Tua. Does not like those body shots. You see Wooden wincing, getting hit downstairs. But Tua unable to put the gutsy Wooden down. Wooden tries to end it with a flurry. He concludes 10 rounds with a future world championship contender. But Wooden once again unable to make that big step. We'll be back with the decision and more on USA's Tuesday Night Fights. Ten rounds down, David Tua pounding away uh, on Jeff Wooden. Tua looking for his 29th victory in this, his 30th professional fight at the tender age of 25. Former bronze medalist in the 92 Barcelona Olympics representing New Zealand. Now living in Auckland, Australia. Lou Duva, Ronnie Shields attending to Tua in the corner and champ taking a a little more time than we would expect on this decision. What does that mean? All right. Ed Darian is set in the ring, so let's get the decision of the judges. 
Ladies and gentlemen, from the Pikesville Armory in Pikesville, Maryland, I've got the scoring, and here it is. Judge Jodi Wingfield scores even at 95-95. While Judge Bill Holmes has it 97-93. And Judge Kenny Chevalier, he scores it 96-95. For the winner, by majority decision, David, the Terminator, Tua. But uh, not Tua. without a wow. skip of the heart and even a mixed reaction from the crowd. Very close. Close scores. But one had it a draw. 97-93, 96-95, wow. the other two. Looked like a looked like a two attack from here. But Tua all smiles though as he still steps out with the W.